I'd be mad if I was me. If I was in a BET Awards sitting there and they're like, and the winner for nigger of the year, Eminem, my man. I got a lot of things to talk about tonight. First of all, I've stopped smoking weed. With black people, you didn't let me finish, motherfuckers. God damn. I'm sorry, black people, to, to break the news so publicly, but I can't smoke with you anymore. Every time I smoke weed with my black friends, all you talk about is your trials and tribulations. I'm sick of that shit. I got my own problems. That's a waste of weed. I'm smoking weed to run away from my problems, not take on yours. From now on, I smoke weed exclusively with white people. <laughs> Calm down, motherfuckers. You win by default. <laughs> you got good weed conversation. All white people talk about when they get high is other times that they got high. <laughs> I can listen to that shit all night. Dude, remember at Frank's last week? It's fucking smashed, man and catalogs everything they drink. Two shots of Jaeger, tequila, four bong hits, man, beer, cheeseburger. That shit is great. Only bad part is you cannot pass out around white people. Every time white dudes pass out around each other, they always do some borderline gay shit when the guy's asleep. Frank fell asleep, so he like stuck a carrot in his ass and put shaving cream on his balls. Like, why, motherfucker? Why would you do that to a friend of yours? He trusted you enough to sleep around you. You gonna put a carrot in his ass? Is that, is that nice? I tell you right now, if I put a carrot in a black dude's ass, a nigga will kill you when he wakes up for some shit like that. That is an automatic death sentence on the street. It's a rap for you. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. I thought y'all was friends, baby. What happened? I, I, I fell asleep at his house, right? We was drinking, and I fell asleep at his house, and, and while I was sleeping, right? I'm just gonna kill that motherfucker, all right? That's all you need to know. And fuck Green Bay, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the kind of money people spend. It's people it's very particular about that. I saw that, that was one of the main stories from the war, it was the first big thing we did, was they said, now that Iraq has been liberated, we have managed to take Saddam Hussein's face off of the money. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, when that press conference came out, I was like choked up. I was, I was actually proud to be an American because that is a very subtle psychological nuance of oppression to have a dictator on your money. And it's thoughtful to be able to take that motherfucker off for the goodwill of another person, right? But then I thought, well, if you could do that for Iraq, what about our money, man? Yeah. Our money looked like Baseball cars with slave owners on. George Washington is the worst of the worst. Yes, I said it. He mythologized this motherfucker like he was the greatest dude, man. If I went back in time with a white person and we saw George Washington walking in front of our time machine, my white friend would probably be like, oh my God, Dave, look, there's George Washington. He's the father of this great nation. I'm gonna go shake his hand. I'd be on the other side like, run, nigga, George Washington. And we'd both be right. You like him because he wrote the Declaration of Independence and all that shit. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. Go get me a sandwich, nigger, or I'll kill you. <laughs> Liberty, justice for all. I agree. And niggas always ask me, like, Dave, why you live in that hippie town? And I'd be embarrassed to tell them the truth. Do you know why I live there? Because Yellow Springs, Ohio, has the most beautiful women in the world. And a lot of people might disagree with me, but you gotta see them for yourself. They're gorgeous. But it all depends on what you're into, you know what I mean? I like white bitches with dirty feet. <laughs> if I had a strip club in Yellow Springs, I would call that shit strippies. All naked hippies all the time. And I'd only hire girls with long titties and, and long vagina hair that looks like they slept on it. And I would keep a pile of dirt right next to the stage. I come back, bitch, get your feet in that dirt and get up there and give those people what they came to see. Chalk up, bitch.
happened, man. Gender is a fact. You have to look at it from a woman's perspective. Look at it like this. Caitlyn Jenner, whom I've met, wonderful person, Caitlyn Jenner was voted Woman of the Year. Her first year as a woman. Ain't that something? Beat every bitch in Detroit, she's better than all of you. Never even had a period, ain't that something? Oh, I'd be mad as shit if I was a woman. I'd be mad if I was me. If I was in a BET Awards sitting there and they're like, and the winner for nigger of the year, Eminem, my man. <laughs> Gender is a fact. This is a fact. Every human being in this room, every human being on Earth had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. That is a fact. Now, I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. I am just saying that those pussies that they got, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's not pussy, but that's like beyond pussy or impossible pussy. You know what I mean? It, it tastes like pussy, but that's not quite what it is, is it? It's not blood, that's beet juice. Every time there's war is going out of control, or the economy gets bad, or something is wrong with the world at large, it's always these moments in history that Michael Jackson will coincidentally jerk off a kid. This is getting a little ridiculous. Like, are you planning this shit? Do you have meetings? Michael, thank you for coming. As you know, Michael, the war has not been going as well as we expected. There's been a lot of hiccups, and the public is asking us a lot of questions, of course. And, well, Michael, there's no nice way to say this, and all I know how to do is be direct, so let me just be direct. We're going to need you to jerk off another child, Mike. I'm sorry. I am sorry. You know, that's just my grand our grandmother used to sing that when she cleaning up. That's a Negro spiritual. Black work song. Not everybody know about that. I know. See, white people, you guys might whistle when you work. <laughs> you dig? But that's how you can tell what kind of work we're actually doing. I study that kind of I do anything that has to do with race. I read a little here, see a little there, and I travel. That's always good. Uh, traveling has made me a uh, a racism connoisseur, if you will. <laughs> you know, it's different from region to region. Anyone ever been down south? So you guys know what I'm talking about. And the racism down there is just <laughs> it's perfect. It's due to a perfection. It's comfortable, it's out in the open. There are no secrets in Mississippi. Everybody knows the deal. Morning, nigger. Morning, sir. <laughs> Not up here. You hit the big cities, man. It's different. It's always a secret. And we should do like them. We should keep our shit out in the open. Then a little. I mean, with limits. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to say whatever comes to your mind. That might be a little much. White dude be walking down the street, minding his business, and the brother walk up to him, hello, you white oppressor, you slave master rapist of Africa. Be, <gasps> Why, hello, my big lip spear chucking friend. <laughs> Touche, honky. <laughs> so, Whitey, what did you do today, huh? 
oppress a new land and make the people there Christians against their will? <laughs> what did you do, fellow? Burn those big black lips on a crack pipe as you missed your job interview? <laughs> Easy, Whitey, you're cutting deep. Oh, this chit-chat has got me thirsty. If you will excuse me for a moment, I'm gonna go to the Korean store and get something to drink. Chilling. Hello. You slanted-eyed, ruining the economy in our neighborhood by opening stores and taking the money out the community. Chink. Well. <laughs> Good afternoon, you browse around but never buy anything. Suspicious looking nigga. After a while, that might be too much. She <laughs> can't help it. If you're an American, you're a racist. We brought up from the beginning to think in generalizations. We never look at the individual. We rarely look at the individual. I'm a racist. I know I'm a racist. You know how I know? The other day, I caught myself being racist against myself. <laughs> There's so much going on, I got mixed up. Forgot whose team I was on. <laughs> One time I was reading the paper, man, this story came on about the, uh, this guy was suing a department store because they wouldn't let him play Santa Claus, you know, because he's black. And I was actually, like, relieved when the department store beat him. That's bad. But I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the idea of a black Santa Claus. Man, that shit would suck. So we wouldn't get our presents to the 28th, 29th. Oh, sorry, I'm late, kids. Santa got caught up with some in Vegas. I had to sell some toys to get back, shit. Where them cookies at?